Hi Gemini, welcome back to Peony Lore, where we help you to find the beauty in all things. So this is going to serve for the sun, moon, and rising sign of Gemini from the 24th all the way through the 31st. So happy Halloween first, or happy Samhain, depending upon how you uh, celebrate it. I um, wanted to make sure that uh, I said thank you so much for all of you guys that have continued to tune in with me. It really is my pleasure to do this. This is my jam. This is what I love to do. I love helping people also. So if you are looking for a personal reading, please make sure that you take a look at the description box below and I'll have all the information you need and how to book in with me. So I am going to pull the sun rising and the moon position here for Cancer and I will read those additional cards at the end and I'll use this time to go through the astrology before we begin. Okay, so Cancer... <clears throat> Uh, Monday still belongs to you. You've been in your energy, especially in the moon position for the past uh, couple of days. Um, so we move into the last portion of what Cancer has going on for us on Monday before the moon starts to transition into the sign of Cancer. So Cancer um, owns Tuesday, Wednesday, um, and portion of Thursday, although Thursday we transition into the moon sign of Leo. Um, so we have Leo Thursday, Friday. And then Saturday and Sunday, we have the moon transitioning into the sign of Virgo. So if you happen to have any of those or signs in your chart, um, you know, this might be an interesting reading for you. The better days of the week energetically, personally, are Monday, uh, Friday into a little bit of Saturday. Tuesday and Saturday are going to be the heaviest days of the week as far as energy because of the different transits that are going on. And I'll explain those as they're relevant for you on those particular days. But um, for the most part, like I said, Monday and Friday are going to be the better days of the week that we have here energetically. We do have a little bit of a break on Sunday, um, which is Samhain or Halloween um, for some individuals. <coughs> And it all depends upon kind of how you um, absorb that energy um, into yourself. But the reason why Monday is such a good day is because we have three different trines that are happening. So the trines are the meeting up of a couple of different signs that are green, in a sense, to do some gorgeous things, right? So we have the trine with Jupiter in Aquarius, which is that expansive energy for creating new things um, in the sign of Gemini. Um, we also have the, the trine with uh uh, Mars in Libra pushing things forward a little bit and then we also have the trine with the moon in Cancer uh, meeting up with the sun in the sign of Scorpio so really shining the light on the things that can be changed right so the reason it can be a little bit wonky like I said on Tuesday is because with all that fiery energy that's kind of coming through um, and I suppose you could say watery energy too, but there's a lot of expansive um, energy that's coming through with those different changes. When we get to the energy of Tuesday, what happens is we have a couple of different squares then that happen, and they're squaring up against um, Chiron and Aries. We've been talking about that for a hot minute, so hopefully you understand what that means. What are you now willing to uh, change based upon the different movement that's going forward, especially with the planets going direct, right? Um, we definitely have a square that's happening with Venus in Sagittarius, that big fire energy about wanting to, to balance things out for things that need to change. But it's hitting up against this Neptune in Pisces energy. We're going to keep both. Um, which is that whole expansive energy of how do we get this done? So it's like a frantic type of energy. How do we do this? How are we going to go about it? So a lot of people are going to be in their thought processes a little bit more than, than normal. That'll carry on into Wednesday when we have Mercury hanging out with Libra, um, really trying to communicate with that whole Cancerian energy. How do we flow this energy through, right? How do we make this happen? Um, and then, like I said, we carry on throughout the week and it gets a little bit more aggressive, I would say, when we get towards the energy of Thursday because that's when we have this um, transition that goes into the sign of Leo. So really trying to push things forward, the moon sign um, pushing into Leo. And then it also has this little dance with the energy of Scorpio also, that sun energy. So Wednesday, Thursday could be a little bit more aggressive for people. Um, Friday is actually a really good day. We kind of get a break <laughs> from an energetic perspective. There's just a lot of that last little bit of uh, Taurus in um, Neptune. Um, uh, uh, no, it's actually Taurus in um, Uranus energy. Excuse me. The practical steps of how to move 
your new projects and things like that along. Um, so there's just a lot of energetic conversation that happens on that particular day. On Saturday, we just have so much stuff going on. We have the trine with Venus in Sagittarius. We have a square with the, the moon in uh, Scorpio um, with Saturn in Aquarius, that expansive energy. The moon will actually switch positions into the side of Virgo, which is good because it starts to make that practical way of trying to get things done, like I said um, later on in the week. And then we have Mercury in Libra having a conversation now with that Neptune in um, Pisces energy, uh, trying to flow it through in the most natural way, okay? And then the practical energy that we have for, um, well, we got two there too, um, for Sunday is just that. It's the practical way. So this week has been kicked up with a lot of different energy um, for how to move forward since we're in those forward momentum, momentum of the planets. And this week is all about how to start getting that done. So that's the astrology for the week. <laughs> now we're going to get into the basic part of the reading here. And as always, we're going to start with our Sacred Geometry deck. And we will uh, have a couple of additional uh, oracles that are going to come out this week. So I'm going to try to be as efficient as I possibly can. Uh, so once again, thank you for being with me here. Okay, so this is for our Gemini, Sun, Moon, and Rising. Here we go. Oop. Gemini, Sun, Moon, and Rising. Thank you. Ooh, we got a big power card here. Um, we have the meditation card, which is connecting to your wisdom, okay? It's a gorgeous energy right here. This is the Sri Yantra, and so this is a really good meditative card, uh, greeting card for using um, and trying to call in financial support where you might need to have it. <clears throat> so connecting to higher wisdom, meditation, this is where the universe wants to help you, Cancer, lay out the foundation for what new financial things you want to bring forward, as well as um, how you are connecting in with spirit in order to make that happen, or what you might need to be able to do here. So we're going to go in with the mystical wisdom, and then I'm going to pull a numerology card, and then I'll lay down the cards for the days of the week here, okay? All right. Cancer, Sun, Moon, and Rising, 25th through the 31st. Thank you. All right. <laughs> They're talking about celebrate this week. Let go and have fun. Can you read that? Hopefully you can. Celebration. Let go and have fun. Can't. Uh, yeah, Gemini, excuse me. So that's the energy that they want you to explore this week. I love the uh, imagery on this particular card. Okay. All right. Let's hit your numerology and then I'll lay down the cards of the week. Connecting to higher wisdom, meditation, celebration. I'm telling you that Sri Yantra is going to be used to help support your finances. Okay. Do you have a money corner? Do you follow the Bagua? Do you follow... Um, Oh, wow. Ooh, ho, 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 ho. I didn't even get to the point where I was going to talk about how it supports this manifestation. And especially with the eight there, it's a continuity of um, consistently bringing things in. So money is going to be a huge, huge opportunity for you guys this week. Um, I was going to say, and I'm, I'm going to write that down, um, feng shui, right? So following the Bagua, and you can Google it, um, or following Feng Shui, talking about the farther, when you walk into your door, it's the farthest southeast um, position in your home, which is where you want to set up your um, uh, your financial grid, if you have one, okay? Um, but yeah, money is going to be a huge situation for you guys this week, and I'm happy to see that someone's getting a leg up here. <laughs> All right, we're moving forward. We're once again going to use the sacred... Um, well, we already did the sacred geometry. <laughs> We're going to use a psychic tarot for each of the days of the week. We are going to, once again, use the um, in-between tarot for anything that happens to show up in the reverse position as a little extra focus. And then if we need to clarify further than that, then we will go into the white sage tarot. And, of course, we have a lot of other uh, uh, oracles that are going to pop out. So we'll take them as an asked to do that. Okay, so Gemini, Monday. 
Tuesday. Wednesday. <laughs> wow. Okay. They're ready to go. Thank you. Wow. Okay. Cool. 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 Thursday. Thank you. Friday. Wow. Saturday. Sunday. You got two and we'll take them both. I get it. Okay, my friends. So here is what we have going on. Excuse me, little dudes. I'm going to move my aisle light over here. Oh, wow. Okay, so here's what we got going on. Some of you guys have had some challenges in the past with either work or um, the home life. And you've gone through a lot of challenges in that, in that type of situation, especially with the partnership. And it took a lot for you to kind of get your bearings in a sense. Um, but you're definitely moving on from something that you had a stronger foundation with. Again, it could be home life. Um, it could be business. If you're working from home, I mean, I got to tie that in together. You were maybe missing something or there was a situation where there was a, 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 a problem um, with you trying to discern something that was going on from a, a heart perspective, um, heart chakra, um, clarity just wasn't there and finally you got it and you decided to stick up for yourself and then this is where the energy of Pluto with all of those um, issues coming through with judgment came through and you finally made a decision that something needed to change uh, in the base of your life. So your structure, so your home, um, how it affected your finances, your job, anything that was physical, tangible, Tangible, touchable um, could have had a lot to do with your education trying to take steps forwards but there was basically a lot of unhappiness um, from what I'm seeing here and this is the week where you're <laughs> you're you're going through it so I'm going to explain the cards that we have every single day and then you basically have uh, gonna have some clarifiers for most days of the week you do have three major arcana that are sitting here um, for this particular week so let's start with that on monday we had the energy of the five of cups and in this deck it's called heartache and loss but with it being in the reverse position and again these cards aren't meant to be read in the reverse but i'm just flowing with what they're telling me to do um, what you have here is healing a lot of healing that's gone on for whatever the past was um, you're taking yourself through a bunch of healing this particular week on tuesday you have the major arcana uh, of capricorn uh, this is called temptation in this deck, but this is like devil energy um, in the reverse position. So what that's telling me is that you definitely are letting go or have let go of something that was really like, like bogging you down here. On Wednesday, we have the energy of the Ace of Cups. Um, and it is paired with the crown chakra. Okay, so that's called love begins here on This particular deck, but the ace of cups is restoration for anything that you need So not only could it be heart healing, okay emotions, but it can also be financial It could it could be anything that you need so that that cup um, that comes through pouring the elixir of life um, or pouring in universal love, if you will, is going to fill up any of the areas that are a little bit lacking. Okay, so it could be across the board, but I really like that. The crown chakra, it's also telling me that there's more awareness for some of you that are really tapped in, um, that there's a lot more information that's getting ready to come into you that it's going to be valuable for you in the future. Okay. Now we have on Thursday the Three of Cups sitting in the reverse position, okay? So this is called Rejoice and Celebration. We will clarify kind of what's going on there, but what I'm getting is that there was a situation from the past um, that we're still finishing trying to clear out of the way. Um, a situation with three people uh, definitely is, is kind of the energy that, I'm, that I've got picking up here just a little bit, but there was something that was not quite right, so you're still trying to clear that out. When we get to the energy of Friday, we have the major arcana of temperance that's sitting here. So this is patience. It's, it's how it's titled in this card. And what I want to try to call your attention to in the imagery here, in her hand, she's holding a seed. And the light of the universe is trying to hit the seed a little bit. So here's what happens with temperance. Temperance is the universe doing things behind the scene. It's the divine alchemy of a little bit of this, a little bit of that. So you definitely are being protected from something that's going on here and the universe is saying, yes, you're, you're being patient and your patience is gonna be required because we're doing things in the background. You don't see it, but we're working on things for you in the background. 
Now, when we get to the energy of Saturday, <laughs> we have Scorpio's major arcana. We have the death card that's kind of sitting here in the reverse position. So more for me than anything else, this is a placement because of where we have the sun in Scorpio um, that's showing up on this particular day, but we will do a clarifier on this. When the death card shows up in the reverse position and in this one, it's just called transformation and that's all it is. It's transforming of the old, it's clearing out 100% of the old stuff so that 100% of the new stuff can come in, okay? When it's in the reverse, usually what that means is there might be a little bit of hesitation, you might be holding on to something a little bit. Um, um, it, you're just got that little bit of fear about this last little thing that needs to get done, but we'll go ahead and clarify that, okay? So it is a little bit of resistance, but when we get to the energy of Sunday, you had two cards that wanted to present, okay? So again, you have the energy of patience and planning, and it has something to do with a change that you are trying to make with the Four of Cups, okay? So you have patience and planning with the Seven of Pentacles that is here, and then you have... Um, in this deck, it's called Discontent and Boredom. So the Four of Cups is indicating that you think everything is okay with what it is that you've got going on here, your Three of Cups, trying to get things back together. But what you may not be seeing is this Fourth Cup that the universe is trying to show you. And that's since the freaking Ace of Cups, so that you're not seeing it for some reason. Okay? But... As it's paired together here, I do think that there's going to be something that shows up for you. What I think is happening here with these Seven of Pentacles is that you're realizing that you can take a little bit of something, something that you have right now available to you and you can use it towards your future, which is going to allow you to accept this cup that wants to come through. Okay, Again, the energy of the Ace of Cups being physically, um, financially, um, and spiritually restored with those different types of things. So the universe is definitely working with you, Gemini, this week, okay? What I want to do is go ahead and get into the clarifiers. We have two, three, four cards that basically need to be clarified, okay? So let's just go ahead and get right on into that, and let's see what we've got going on here. Universe, can you help me clarify? They said, do not use this one. What am I using then? Oracle of the Radiant Sun. All right. Fair enough. So we're going to use Oracle of the Radiant Sun is what they wanted me to do, at least for this card. So we're going to talk about this, this card on Monday with this emotional loss, this Five of Cups, um, getting through this healing uh, situation that we had going on here. All right. What am I, um, how am I clarifying this, you guys? Individual. Individual or situation and then Gemini. Okay. So the reason, okay, let's get this figured out. What was the situation for Gemini here? Thank you. There was a challenge with resources or resourcefulness from whoever it is that you were dealing with in the past. Almost like someone might not have been willing to help you. Cancerian energy. And then Gemini. Ooh. Mm, okay. <laughs> um, definitely Cancer. Uh, Cancerian energy. Um, where there was no... Um, <laughs> there was no thinking about how things could change. So what we have is the um, the Sun in Cancer. And then we also have Jupiter in Cancer. So we have speculation and we have resourcefulness. Someone not willing to make moves that you were dealing with, Gemini. Um, and therefore, they were not able to be resourceful because they weren't willing to try to take a step. Okay. And then what was going on here is you just got to the point where you were done being empathetic with their thought process. And you're like, I got to do me. I got to move forward. So the, the card here with the empathy showing up in the reverse position doesn't mean that you're not empathetic. But it means is that you were not willing to overlook... Um, your needs over the empathy that is huge which is why the whole um you know healing out of this situation getting through this particular situation i mean because the five of cups is harsh energy for people um it is that beginning point of changing and that like spark in your head that aha it's like wait a minute i'm not getting what i need out of this because i'm devoting way too much time potentially to this other individual and whatever that particular situation is so therefore We've got the, you know, the devil card in the reverse position 
relief, right? Release, relief from that type of a situation. Which cards do you want me to use to clarify? Now they said to use these. Okay, got it. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So we're just going to give these little dudes a quick shuffle and let's get into the um, release. Whoops, there we go. Thank you. Their person, okay. Their situation, got it. <laughs> Five of Swords, bye! Gotta go! Had some harsh conversation, had some harsh words, but moving on, moving on from the Five of Swords into the Six of Swords. This is the energy of saying what it is that you needed to say. May have been a little curt as far as conversation, but you said what you needed to say. And you're moving towards something that's brand new. That was very fast. Thank you, universe. Yeah. Whoever it is that you were dealing with, this water sign <laughs> was not necessarily um, feeling or in their maturity at that particular moment to be able to understand kind of what's going on. How does that leave Gemini at this point then? I mean, I know how it turns out, but let's figure this out. Thank you. Mm. Yep, yeah, you're, you're moving forward. You've got the Eight of Wands into the Nine of Wands. So this is indicating that there's communication that was had. You either had a lot of downloads, um, a lot of emails. There was a lot of conversation, a lot of communication that was going through this. And um, what's going on here is the Nine. Um, you're left here in the area of the Nine of Rods or Wands, however you de determined and learned the language. And that is a huge spiritual card. Um, because what it means is that you are finally listening to spirit, you're finally listening to your guidance, you're finally listening to that inner self that says no. Um, stop in the name of love. <laughs> I don't know why they told me that, but stop in the name of love comes out. You're, you're done over extending yourself to someone, okay? All right. Therefore, <laughs> that's why you get the love begins here on Wednesday. You're pouring this love energy back into yourself and your crown chakra is really sparked at this particular moment. Again, I feel re receiving more messages um, and more clarity from your team. So let's focus on why we have this three of cups in the reverse position. Just real quick. What is this all about for our Gemini? Third person. Okay. <laughs> What we have here is the Ten of Coins into the Ace of Coins. Okay, so it did present in the reverse position here. So what we have is this person not seeing the ability to continue to move forward. Okay. Not seeing what you were bringing, not seeing what you were bringing towards the table, but you are smart enough to pick up on a signal. So this is the wheel mixed with the uh, Justice card here in this deck. And this is um, taking... Um, a strong look. So if you paid attention, I think this was two or three weeks ago where I said you need to pay attention to what some something is going to present itself. You did. Okay. Oh, and we have, you want me to take both or just one? Yeah. Whoever, <laughs> they said both. So the first situation is that whoever this individual was, this was a hard lesson for them. This was a hard lesson for them. So this is the energy of the Page of Cups who should be transitioning into the Knight of Cups. Very fast of, um, progression as far as learning is concerned, um, but it was very hard for them. And they said to take these other two to help round this out, because this isn't about you, this is about them at this particular moment. However, um, again, we have justice with the hangman, okay? Realizing that a situation needed to be faced. And then finally, the energy of the Six of Swords moving into the Seven of Swords. Again, this is you. So what's happening in this particular situation is like this individual, whoever it is that you're dealing with this particular moment, they kind of went, wah, 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 you know what I mean? All these good times and all the situation that happened and blah, blah, blah. And you're like, mm -hmm, yeah, but, um, and you're kind of sticking to your guns on this one, which I really like. You're sticking to your guns. So Six of Swords, again, is that movement forward from something that was wonky in the past. And you can see the light and you're being guided in order to help support you. The Seven of Swords energy is really it's because you have something that you are keeping close to the vest. You have something that you want and you're no longer willing to give it up. So some people can, can see that energy as being sneaky and backstabby. That's how people can perceive it. But what it really is for me, and this is again the guidance that I was given as I always started to do this, was no, it's somebody that wants something so bad, they're willing to have tried to scoop up those seven swords, let the two go that no longer serve them, and hold on to the things that they want. 
And those are the words that were said earlier in the week. You, you laid it out. You said what you needed to say and you won the battle. Now you're ready to move forward with whatever that cost is, whatever that conversation was. That is where the patience kind of steps into play. You put it out there. Things are changing for you. Okay, so let's go into this energy of the um, death card in reverse. Which deck do you guys want me to use? Okay, continue. All right. So let's focus on this transformation because for me, again, like I said, when it shows up in the reverse position, it's like you might be holding on to that last little bit of something, something, but let's clear this up. Ace of Wands in the reverse position. Timing. There it is. Temperance with death again. Yeah. Take both. Okay. Okay. They said, this is your story. Here's here's where you're at. Okay, because this is all you. So here's, here's the reason why this little teeny tiny bit of resistance still presents itself when we get to the energy of Saturday. First, all the energy that you went through, it like... It took everything and then some for you to get to this point where you said what you needed to say. And you're just trying to get your spark back, right? This person like really challenged you a lot again we have death and temperance that's here and again this is the whole sequence that we have right here death and temperance okay so death and temperance are, are saying no 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 things have to change in order for you to move forward it's like this rebirth of who you are going to become in this particular situation let me get the order right the ace of cups is where you need to be living we are trying to restore you. So it's not that you're avoiding anything. It's that you're very tired and you're just giving yourself the opportunity to kind of restore where you're at here with this Ace of Cups. Okay. Um, what they're saying is, because there's a whole plot line here, you have the Page of Coins. There's definitely new opportunities that are showing up here for you from a financial perspective. Page of Coins transitioning into the Knight of Coins. So whatever this is for you, it definitely is going to be long term um, as far as gain, right? You are at that point where you, yeah, you needed to gather your strength with this Nine of Wands energy, very spiritual, so that you could finally let this situation go Nine of Nine into the Ten finally getting yourself together where you can just make that last push and effort forward and then yeah you are making the decision with the two of swords in the reverse position into the three of swords whatever is you're leaving behind whatever that situation was was not an easy situation for you to make so you know you know give yourself a lot of gratitude and props for getting past that old bs because the universe is really trying to shower you with this next thing the phase had to end it just literally wasn't for you so the only thing they're telling you is yes you have the opportunity now with um, potentially pulling up some investments if you really need to do that. Take a look at where your financial statements are, what it is that you could potentially take a look at. But there is the universe trying to show you something. So just make sure that you don't get so comfortable with this particular change that's happening right now that you don't see this new offer that's coming for you. Okay, twice they told you patience is part of it. Twice the universe has told you that they are planning things for you and they're doing work on your behalf give yourself the opportunity to rest recoup all right patience and patience that's sitting here that's universal energy that's that temperance energy that we talked about um, coming in to support you but there is an offer that's on its way towards you and so you have to be completely restored and they're just saying this situation like really took it out of you but you are going to overcome this this transformation absolutely is going to happen and so be patient with you as well because whatever it is that you've gone through has been very traumatic for you as well in a, in a sense but you are moving forward and you're progressing beautifully. Is there anything else that I'm missing on this one universe? Nope. They said I've covered it. Again, whatever this particular situation is, you're moving on from home, from work, um, where you felt like you lacked clarity. It just literally wasn't in your heart. You've got to maintain and stand your ground. You, you put your stake in the ground move forward continue to move forward the truth of the situation was that this partnership or the situation ship wasn't for you any longer and the universe is seeing you um in, in the direction of taking these new steps with support okay so i love that energy for you let me go ahead and move into the different angel messages that we have here we have three different 
card decks that are available. Let's see which ones they want to use. They said start with the masters. All right. So, Gemini. Gemini, Gemini, Gemini. <laughs> they said they said make sure that you know that this four of cups also could be read as this cancer energy um, who or this individual energy was where you were just basically bored and content. They said read that both ways. I'm like, okay. So there is something that's coming for you. And if this water energy individual here was the one that was sucking the, the life out of you, just trust and know <laughs> that you are making the right decision by moving forward. Anything else? Concluded. Okay, thank you. Here we go, Masters. What do we have? Which Ascended Master wants to step forward and offer Gemini some additional information and support? All right, thank you. <laughs> there is harmony and resolution in this particular situation. Um, and this actually is the angel uh, angel deck, not the masters. They said bring the masters out, but um, this is what we have here. So we'll bring up the keepers of the light here so we can see which master wants to step forward. <clears throat> Call on whoever is within your particular pantheon, but these are just additional options um, for you as well. Gemini. Ooh, I love that. Look at that. Kuan Yin. Care and compassion. You can call in the energy of Kuan Yin. She's like the energy of Mother Mary um, in the uh, Eastern Pantheon. She's one of my favorites. Choose to be love. Do what is right for everyone involved. Offer a helping hand when you can, but keep yourself at the top of the list. Okay? Care and compassion is also for yourself in this transition. Okay? Um, angel prayers, thank you. Okay, so uh, Kuan Yin also wants to talk about this manifestation piece that's here. So we will talk about that. <coughs> Aww. So there's, this card matches with this one. Okay. You have spirit guidance coming from um, a loved one in, that has already crossed over. So loved one in heaven is the energy. Um, thank you loved ones in heaven for drawing close at this particular time. So not only do you have angelic support, but you also have the support of ancestors, someone that has passed over that's close to you that is helping within this situation. So if you've been having dreams of... Um, someone in your family that's crossed over that you were close to, that is real. That is real information. That is them trying to communicate with you during your dream time. Make sure you're pulling out that journal and you're communicating like your feeling of what that dream was like. If you can't capture 100% of the detail, record it into your microphone and your phone. If you can get to that point, maybe that would help support you later so you can dictate it out. But there's messages that your loved ones and spirit are trying to communicate to you at this time that's of a supportive nature. Um, what Kuan Yin was talking about was your your version of manifestation. Have care and compassion for the other individuals to, to create a situation that is going to be harmonious for everyone in the breaking up or the separation of this energy uh, that uh, involves you and this other, other individual. Um, if you can call on the benefits of manifesta manifestation for both parties involved to be equal, then you're going to find yourself moving out of the situation with even more grace, which is why this Sri Yantra card came on. So this is a suggestion for you to also put your energy into manifesting what is um, equitable for you and this other individual. So take a picture of this one or Google Sri Yantra. Um, and you can print that shape out and you can put grids on it. You can write a prayer on the back of the piece of paper um, and you can ask for what it is that you need. Obviously, we just went through full moon, but it doesn't matter. You can do, you know, prayer ceremony anytime that you want to. But they're saying this is going to be supportive and helping you. OK, and then the ancestors that are coming through is really talking about let go and have fun. Let go. You. This is for you at this particular moment. Let go and have fun with this particular situation. You've done all the things that you're supposed to do here. You're, you're all the way done. So enjoy this new transition in your life. And you definitely have guidance that is here um, supporting you. Okay? All right. Is there anything else? I think I got everything. 
concluded. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to move into, oh, no, they want me to pull the details out with this one. Well, I can already tell you, um, if you use the grid, they want me to go into the details of the, uh, of the uh, card here, sacred geometry card. I can already tell you that if you're going to do financial work with this one, like I said, you can print this out, uh, find it online. Um, you can put and write a prayer on the back of it. And if you happen to have these other crystals to help ground you during this particular time, because it's going to be kind of big energy, then I'll give you the suggestions, what they're what they're telling you here. Okay. They're, first, they want you to start off with about five or ten minutes of meditation every single day. Um, you can just say thank you for the... Thank you for helping me through this transition. Thank you for helping me through this transition. You know, you can say that over and over again if you're not a meditator. If you are a meditator, then the symbol uh, 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 mantra that goes with this is simply OM. And the sound of OM kind of aligns you. Okay. But otherwise, um, you can um, repeat the OM mantra over and over to help fill your body with the energy of the frequency. It's like 432 hertz. You can also put 432 hertz music on to help you if you're in meditation. Um, and it's basically in harmony. And it helps to lift your spirits. Literally, it does. Okay? So... Um, the suggestions for using this as a crystal grid would be utilizing selenite, celestite, okay, clear quartz, apophyllite, and singing quartz. Now, apophyllite is a very strong crystal. It is available. I mean, the, you can get them in very small, tiny pieces, and you can get them in blades, I don't have an apophyllite down here, but I have a crap ton of selenite and lots of different sizes. So whatever type of selenite that you can get your hands on, um, clear quartz obviously is to clarify whatever it is that you're trying to um, bring towards yourself. All right, this meditation um, can amplify what it is that you've got going on, plus any words that you use on the back of that prayer is going to be able to support you. Um... Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And of course, um, using something grounding like pyrite will help you to um, ground yourself in all of this different energy that's kind of kicking on uh, uh, around you at this particular moment. So as above, so below. If you can get yourself grounded um, with a deeper crystal like a pyrite or maybe even a tourmaline um, or even a really nice big carnelian will help you like continue to stay aligned um, and then you will feel a lot better as you're going through this particular transition this week okay so hopefully that helped you now now I'm gonna go into the uh, additional messages here okay so if you are a Gemini Sun these are your additional messages first you are a part of a team of souls so call in your soul family Call in your star family if you're down with that whole situation. Call in your star family to help you with the next steps, okay? And then watch for the signs and the signals to show up. From Earth Magic, yes, this is the unfoldment process that's happening. The lotus, okay? You guys know the story of the lotus flower? It's so beautiful on top, but it starts off as a seed in this muddy, murky, nasty situation, okay? But it becomes this gorgeous lotus at the top. So just know that, you know, this is what you're going through. You're going through the unfoldment process and, and becoming, whether you're male or female, it doesn't really make a difference. You're becoming into your next area. The fairies are stepping forward here and they're talking to you about inspiration. Be prepared. As soon, you'll soon receive a visit from the fairy of inspiration. Come dusk or dawn, she can call on at any time. Okay? All right. So fairies are like little teeny tiny bitty angels. <laughs> Beg your pardon. There's a lot of energy in here right now. Okay. And then the energy that we have from the uh, uh, the Black Moon Astrology is the energy of Taurus here. The I have energy. Okay. So the energy of the I have is like the energy of the Hierophant in a sense. It's the higher level of knowledge. It's the higher level of awareness. It is the level of commitment and the commitment to yourself in the I have. I have enough. I have what I need to move forward. I have all of the inspiration and the angelic, whatever you say after I am or I have, especially in a positive light, 
is creating the momentum for you. It's that whole universal law of uh, calling in um, what it is that you need. So the I have, just make sure you use all the positives at the end of that, okay? And I would, I would marry that to the meditation card if you were to print that out and say, I have enough. You know what I mean? Um, moving forward, okay? If you are a Gemini rising, then here are your messages. Water your garden. It's talking about making sure that you get the rest that you need from this particular portion of the transition. Rest, um, meditate, take care of your body, be tender with yourself. Again, you're going through a big transition right now, okay? Water your garden. Earth magic. Ooh. <laughs> Eagle, this is an OBS card. This is co literal communion with spirit. So some of you are really capable of getting connected to your higher self and you're, cap you're capable of tapping in to the detail that um, your spirit guidance is trying to share with you. So that they're telling you, we are showing you the next steps. <laughs> so connect with us so we can lay it out with you. Okay, co-creation. The fairies are talking about magical blessings. Whatever you're going through, you're being assisted by magical fairy blessings as well. The fairies say you have the capacity to bless others too. So with the energy of the whole Kuan Yin there, who's talking about making sure that you're blessing all people, you know what I mean? It, with how you need to separate things in order for everyone to feel comfortable, that's a good opportunity. <laughs> and then you guys have the energy of a Libra I balance, right? And that's not exactly what Libra's about. It's about being fair. Um, it's about making sure that things are equal. It's about making sure that things are balanced, body, mind, and spirit, so that you can always be at your very best, okay? Now, if you are a Gemini moon, you have a couple of extra cards that came out, so give me a moment to honor them, okay? Um, the first one that we have here is surrender to the sweetness venus energy right taurus libra <laughs> venus energy pleasure and joy and making sure that you're appreciating and loving your life it says make love to life but you know we say what we say okay that is part one part two is big picture thinking which is the energy of the pleiades okay so if you feel like you have pleiadian starseed markings then here you go. Being a visionary and having inspired ideas are coming towards you at this particular moment. All right. Okay. We also have double messages from Earth Magic. First one is the whale, which is breach. Come out of the water and do you, boo. That's exactly what's going on here. In big momentum. Big momentum. The energy that we have is ocean. <laughs> ebb and flow so you just gotta you gotta roll with it you gotta roll with it you know sometimes there's high tides sometimes there's low tides roll with it and don't fight the process ebb and flow from the fairies again double messages so the first card is that there's a magical gateway it takes courage and trust to venture into the unknown yet this is where the greatest rewards are it's time to step boldly forward without looking backwards okay magical gateway Okay. Um, the second one is fairy spotting. It's time to go fairy spotting. It said that seeing is believing, but in fact, the opposite is true. Believing the whole process allows you to start seeing the energy of the process. So believing is actually seeing. Some of you have your third eye that's really wide open. And if you find yourself on a nature walk uh, or other things of that particular nature, you will see them present themselves to you now it's not going to be hi i'm pixie fairy xyz it could but not usually you start to see little lights and you start to see little shapes and you start to see just like you know that it's not of a natural process those are the fairies that are trying to let you know that they're with okay now for the energy that you have from the monology card <laughs> This is the energy of Uranus, which is the genius energy, okay? So Uranus is the energy of the fool. We talk about that a lot because it shows up in situations, especially on Friday. It's going to hit really, really hard for people. Um, Uranus is the energy of the fool. It wants to bring forward uh, new momentum. The energy of Aquarius is actually the energy of genius, okay? Um, they have these big, grand ideas about things. So if you blend the two of these um, two together... Um, there is something new, full energy that is here for you. And it has a lot of uh, the elements of, of something that is grand when it comes to 
creation energy, like ideas, and you've got plans within plans within plans. I really like the energy of how that works, okay? So I'm just going to refer back to the book here because I don't think there's anything else in here that I'm not aware of. Yeah, no. It's just, um, it's the energy that you have something that you want to be able to do. You thought it out. You're just biding your time at this particular moment and just trying to wade through it. But whatever it is that's going on, this full energy really wants to be able to support the idea that you have. So do it. That's what the whale is talking about. Breach. Do it. Get out of your own way and like make that magic happen for yourself. Okay. Whew, that was a lot. <laughs> But um, it's my pleasure to try to give those informational pieces out for people. So, you know, whether you're Gemini, Sun, Moon, or Rising, I hope that you were able to get a lot of information out of this particular reading. If you did and you resonated, make sure that you give this a like so that I can be found in the algorithms for other people to take advantage of the detail as well. If you are looking for a little bit more information, make sure that you're taking a look at your full Sun sign, your full Moon sign, your full Rising sign, and your North Node that will be really supportive. And again, if you're looking for a personal one-to-one one reading just to get down to your love and energy to be really specific then take a look in the description box below and i'd be happy to take um a session with you okay many 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 blessings i hope that you guys have a wonderful wonderful week and we will talk to you in november already can you believe it <laughs> bye for now <laughs>